All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bowhunter Chronicles podcast. And uh, the gang is all here. We got Mr. John Borsma, uh, Ernie Califf, and uh, Uncle Frank. And uh, in light of the last couple of podcasts that have done, um, talking about, you know, Aaron Blicey going out on public land and, you know, kind of. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, Aaron and your hunt going out there and, uh, rather than just buying new stuff, going out there and, and doing some scouting, doing some uh, trail camera work, you know, if you want a new new piece of gear for your bow, go shoot your bow 100 times a day for seven days and then go do it, you know, kind of actually putting in the work to justify it. And then if at the end of the day you think that you still need it, then then go ahead. Right. I mean, I see, I see John's eyes kind of perking up here. So, so. yeah, I mean, that's how you should do it. So um, in, in light of that, I had uh, some guys reach out and say, um, they didn't like the term that I use with like elite hunters. And they were talking about um, guys that are able to go out on public land and just kill deer, like just go out to any piece of public land and, go find deer, kill a deer, find a good deer, you know, kill a buck, whatever. And I said, well, I know just two guys, uh, that can do just that. And I kind of posed this question to, to Frank and Ernie, uh, while we were up, uh, camping when we were on vacation, um, that, you know, I, I guess I want to pose it like this and, and John can jump in here for the discussion anyways. Um, but like, kind of like back in the day, like, so before, Onyx, Space Map, Spartan Forge, any of the mapping uh, and learning the the public land stuff. Um, where did you find the the information? So how did you, and then how would you go about like killing a deer? So I, what I had said to Ernie up there was, if I said I'm going to kill your whole family if you don't go to this piece of public land that you've never seen before and you have to kill a deer in three days not a big buck not anything a deer a deer how do you with a bow with a bow yeah i was going to say there's a few you know i have other options yeah Uh, (laughs) uh, a spotlight in a 15 minutes (laughs) yeah grenades 12 12, 15 at night so just talking about my old man uh, <laughs> uh that'd be a legal bow kill frank is oh, what God. we're after here so so like well, let's let's start off like this so we'll go ernie john and then frank like the the take me through like the first deer that you ever killed with a bow first one um hunting on some public land i was 17 years old how did you find the public land? How did you find the spot? Walked down a gravel road, seen where the two track, uh, the trails were crossing. I mean, I knew very little. I did know through my brothers. Said you find out what you use them tracks, find out where they're crossing these deals, and get in there where you have a nice ambush spot. So I skipped school one morning. I went out for my, I think it was my first sit there, and had a big doe come in with a fawn and turn sideways in front of me. And if you can picture a guy in a flannel shirt, ball cap on backwards, long johns on, rust colored corduroys with tear in them. I was sitting on a white bucket and I just put three pieces of wood in this crotch of this triple tree. So I had something to sit on white bucket. And I was, that's how, what I looked like carried three arrows with dull wasps you know i knew nothing borrowed my dad's bow and i shot that doe center of the ribs so i thought man this is pretty easy the following year i missed seven times <laughs> never touched a hair but at least you had shoot but but you've seen you've seen yeah. animals yeah and, and so just just for the the new guy just just for the whole um like completion of the story like what happened next so for like the recovery for the track job gutting well it's you know i had hunted with a gun probably 
three seasons. So I was into my first actual bow season. Uh, shot at the Bowman's Club with a recurve for a while, and then I was able to get a bow. You know, not a good bow, but a bow. So the guy that was with me, um, who was one of the neighbor kids, he skipped school also. Um, we after I shot the deer, I went and told him, man, I hit this deer. I watched it go away and I heard it crashing. Um, we just decided to try to track it on our own and we, we did it. Um, not as much blood as I wanted. Cause like I said, it was a uh, dull. Now that I think back, they were relatively dull broadheads, but, um, there was enough blood and found it and got pretty wound up. Probably the neatest thing about getting that deer. Um, I took it home and hung it in what we call the big tree, which is right next to our house. My dad's a lifetime gun hunter. He comes home for work, from work, parks, he looks, he gets out and he, he looks at me, and he points at it. He looked back at me, he points at it again. And he'd never said a word. He's, he's going, he want, well, what happened? I go, I got him, <laughs> you know, he says, oh my God. And he checked it all out. And then he says, you know what? They're up to 20 bucks for cleaning those deer. He says, well, you say we try it ourselves. So since that day, we cut our own animals. Up. That was my dad's reaction to that was probably my favorite thing. <laughs> it's cool. My dad's was the opposite. Cause I shot a doe with my first deer with the bow and he was pissed. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> What the hell are you shooting a doe for? Like, because they eat good, Dad. And what was your story? Your story is so I not similar. I'm thinking of the one, the big buck that you killed. Oh, that was with the gun. Yeah, Yeah. 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 we gave him the bag of nuts, (laughs) these nuts. Yeah, that was right at the hockey arena. But no, that was that one was with the gun. I killed several nice bucks with my gun, and then finally got a. Uh, I missed a lot of deer with my bow, but you know, I'm coming, you know, growing up with my dad that he was like, this, just the freaking deer murderer. I mean, he just, he killed deer like every year, many deer, but that's what we lived on. And so like all the spots that I hunted were my dad's old spots. Like even where I killed my second, my, uh, second buck with a rifle, I actually went up, it was wall holla. It was a spot I went up with my own. Not supposed to say that. Yeah, well, it don't matter now because that <laughs> spot's all private land now anyway. So, but I'm up there with my uncles, you know, my uncle Art, my uncle Ray, and they just dropped me off. Uh, like, okay, we drive down this two track, and every everyone would just bail out. Like, okay, here's your spot. Here's your spot. I hadn't like even been to this spot, and. He's like, all right. So this is before daylight. Oh yeah, dark. You know, <laughs> opening morning. And what it was was it was my cousin Danelle's blind. Was that the point? Yeah. At the point? Yeah. And so he, uh, my uncle Art was the one. He we had already dropped off Ray, and Uncle Art's like, all right, just walk straight down that. Like there's a like kind of a runway. Walk straight down that, and you'll see the blind. It's like right back in there no flashlight nothing you know i'm walking back and i get back there and all of a sudden i can see a cigarette like the cherry of a cigarette in the blind i'm like oh crap now what i do like so i just started walking back i walked back out to the two track and i got like a tree i'm sitting with my back on the tree like so the dude shoots doesn't shoot me you know and i don't want to go you know up the two track to the right or the left because my uncles and cousins are all that way so this starts getting it starts getting a little bit light and I, I can see like out straight away from me that there was look like kind of an opening, like it lit up a little bit better out there. And I, I thought I seen like a flicker of a tail. So I'm like, I start sneaking out that way. And then I get out there and I come out onto this point and there's like a little drainage on each side. And there's like kind of a mound out in the middle and there's a bunch of cuttings and one big ass tree, like on this little mound. I'm sitting there and I get to this point and there's an old blind right there. Like, I mean, it had been, hadn't been used in years. So I just sit down on that. And then sure enough, I'm looking at that big tree and I see a deer. It's like a little four point, but he was like, I could just see parts of him, like his head and his tail. And, and so I'm getting all ready to shoot that thing. 
And all of a sudden to my left, down that freaking drainage, here comes five bucks. I'm like, holy crap. I mean, this no bullshit, five bucks come running in. The first one stops and I shoot it and they all scatter. And I'm like, I rack another shell. And there, the, there was a bigger one was like Bullwinkle that was like ran into them, that scrubby brush. And I could see him. I had him in the scope and everything. I'm like, man, I, I can't shoot through that stuff, you know? And it, it felt like forever, but then he took off. So I'm like, I get up and I run down there. And I'm like, I'm looking for blood. I can't find any blood. And I see a tree about two inches in diameter, just blown apart. I'm like, oh my God, I shot a tree, you know? Well, then I start looking around and I see like one speck of blood and I'm, I'm just like looking down. I'm not looking. I did look up where like that other buck and there's a dude on the other, other edge of that hill, you know, pumpkin up there, bright orange, I'm like crap. Well, then I'm looking for blood again. And then I see some more and more. And then I look into the edge of them slashings right there. And then I just see the feet sticking up over this log. I'm like, holy shit, I got it. I'll go over there and it's a dandy 8 point, 17 half inch spread. I didn't even have a knife or anything. I just grabbed that thing and started dragging. <laughs> I drug him back out. To him. I'm like, this guy isn't going to get my deer, you know? And then I ran down, got my cousin, Jeff. Neither one of us had knives. And I go down and get Uncle Ray's knife and screwed up everybody's hunt. But that was pretty cool. But, but so then I tell my dad where I'm, he's like, that was my old blind. Like, that's yeah. the point. He's like, I built that blind years ago. I'm like, no. He's like, then if you go over to the next ridge, that's where like the JB tree or the beer beer can tree or, you know, like I always heard like Uncle Frank and them talking. I had the FA tree that I carved. I was carved by many of them. It was like a beach tree or something? No, it was a pop, big, big head popple tree mm, popple. that I was in. And I, was, I was like a couple ridges over from him, like, you know. And uh, I, I just, you know, you get bored sometimes. I, I, I was sitting there, you know, and that was without seats on this tree stands or nothing, you know. So finally I turned around and I was facing the tree. I thought, oh, that's weird. I take my knife and cut it. I put my initials, big, big initials in the tree. And I got the F in there and, uh, you know, and I get the A in there and I'm just about done with the A, you know. And I heard something behind me and I turned around and looked and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> big old bug standing there looking at me man. and i'm backwards you know, the bow's hanging on the tree you know it was one of them deals where he's just kind of looking at me like yeah well, you're an idiot <laughs> well, i need to say i didn't even get the bow picked up he was gone All right but that was the old fh right mm -hmm. so for you frank what was your first like bow kill like gosh it, it, it would be um i was probably with his dad or art and uh, I was shooting a right-handed recurve, and I'm left-handed. And I shot it. That's the way I shot that bow. I had a, uh, it ended up being a, I think it was a uh, Shakespeare Super Nasita. And that's what your dad had, too. That was, so, so he was doing that before Joel Turner was. <laughs> but I was actually shooting it. Left-handed. Left-handed. But it was a right-handed recurve. And and we were up, I think we were up by Pine Point when I killed that dog. And uh, just, you know, I, I public I, land, I, private land. Oh, it was public, all public, you know. Well, everything was public to us back then. <laughs> 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 but but it was it was, you know, it was not a big deer, you know. And, yeah, but I was excited, you know, when I shot it. You know? It wasn't it wasn't a, a hard shot either. <laughs> you know, it was kind of back a little bit. So I have a tendency to do that sometimes. So how old were you then? Then I was probably, I don't know, 14, I, think, I guess, you know. But I had shot a deer before that. I think I was about 10. But that one wasn't with a, a bow. <laughs> <laughs> we were squirrel hunting, my brother and I. And... Uh, it was his fault. Okay. And what year is this? Just so we're statue of limitations. I, th I think yeah. you're. I think you're beyond that. Because what we happened was we were squirrel hunting, and and I hear this. I was just sitting by the tree. You know, he told me sit here. You know, and I had a twelve gauge. You know, my big old long barrel twelve gauge. You know. How old were you? I was about ten. 10? Wow. And you know, there was no loss back then. <laughs> no, I meant the twelve gauge. Oh no, no, badass. Too, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. I got a 12 gauge when I was 10. I think my brother got one when he was so, eight. I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I hear, 
I start looking down. There's like a lane there, you know, and these deer are going by, and my brother's standing up, and he's just boom, boom with a twenty-two, you know. He's shooting his spear, and I'm going, "What's he doing?" You know. <laughs> and he's going, "Come on, come on down here," you know. So I go down there. Let me see your gun. Opens it up, and that's when we had paper shells, you know. And he just takes his knife out and cuts the shell. And sticks it back. And in. how old was your brother? He was 10 years older than me, you know, and I go, so he goes, all right, he says, I'm going to walk into this brush. He goes, if, if you see that deer, he said, just shoot it, you know, so I don't know, okay, you know. Turned it into a slug. I didn't think I'd ever mm -hmm. see it. Cut you know? shell. Oh, yeah. man, I walked in there. I was in there maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 yards, you know, all of a sudden this deer stands up right in front. And I could see it was hurt, you know, so I just, he said, just put the bead right behind the leg, you know, and, whoa, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I busted my nose, man, holy crap, that was the biggest recoil I've ever experienced, you know, and he goes, did you get it, and I go, I don't know, man, but I'm really pissed, you know, <laughs> I was hurt, so, Pretty soon he comes over there and we walk over there, man, it was dead as a stone, man. I just smoked it. <laughs> but I mean, it was, had a hole in it as big as your fist, you know? Right. Uh, yeah, that was, that was, you know, I mean, back then that was what we ate, you know? So that's like, so my dad, his, like his first deer, like he had, all he had was a 22. Yeah. And my grandpa was like, you know, I'll buy you a rifle if you can kill a deer with the 22. And he... <laughs> Yeah, really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> but back to so back to the story of killing my first deer with the bow it was actually at the point yeah. so after we after you know my uncles got that spot for my dad and you yeah. you know right. and because my dad pretty much quit gun hunting at that point and and so then i just started going up there bow hunting and then went up there I missed a nice six point and I missed a spike horn. And then finally this deer come in and it was just getting, you know, just gray light, just legal light. And I thought it was like, man, is that that spike horn? And we're like, I shot it and it piled up like, Phew. and I was shooting that, uh, Pearson spoiler plus 80 pounds. <laughs> and I had, I think I was, I was 16 at that time. Cause I drove up there myself and, uh, I went down there and it was a doe. I'm like, well, really good, you know, and then went down and got it back to the house. My dad was pissed. What are you shooting a doe for? Well, that, that same spot though, right there, you know, where the FA tree, I told you the FA tree was, mm -hmm. your dad was hunting that one night. And uh, I can't even remember the bows we had. It was, they were compounds and he, he comes out to me, you know, and he goes, oh, you ain't going to believe what happened tonight, man. He said, speed point, man, comes in there, you know, and he's with this doe, and he comes in, and I draw back, and my flipper rest fell off, he says, you know, and it, they took off, you know, and he's, he's pissed, you know, he's up there, and I mean, it actually fell on the ground <laughs> down below him, you know, so he's sitting there, you know, getting dark. All of a sudden, you know, oh, he's coming back, you know. Sees this bigger deer coming back, you know. So he draws back and puts his goddamn finger up there like this. <laughs> no shit. Holds his finger up. <laughs> shoots his deer, right? Thought gets it. He says, All right. Yeah. You know, got him. So I I went over there after dark and he was still there, you know, off the tree. You know, and he comes down and goes, I just shot a big eight point. He says, you know, okay. Where'd you hit it? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's dark, you know. <laughs> he said, I, I had to hold my finger up there, on the, you know, to hold the rear off. I go, what? He goes, God, that my flipper wrist fell off and all kinds of shit, you know. And I go, holy crap, you know. So he gets down and we go over there, you know, and find, you know, where he hit it, you know. Oh, there's the blood. Yeah, okay. You got it, you know. So we're, we're tracking, you know, and all of a sudden we get up there, you know, and blood kind of stopped, you know, but it was all over the place, you know. And then I looked at right there and oh, there's a deer, you know. So I go over there and I grab it, you know. Made them horns on this son of a bitch. 
said, I thought you said we shot April. I did. I said, well, something happened. And I said, in the meantime, I said, because this is the big doe. What? I shot a big doe? I said, right through the liver, man. I mean, he hit it right there. He was right in the middle. He was, and I go, you're the one that's always bitching about a shooting doe. He said, yeah, you killed this big one, you know. So, yeah, that was fun. And you know that, Ray, when he says that flipper rest fell off his bow, I mean, these people that are starting today and these new people, and you you probably know a lot of them, a lot of listeners that are trying to get better. If you want to appreciate today's equipment, you need to go hunt with what we had. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I shot bare fingers, no sight, with a black tail two-wheel bow. And when you shoot them, they go like that. Was yeah, just a little rubber, solid, rubber, little rubber. black yeah. plastic thing. That actually was probably Feathers. the best rest <laughs> that you, you know, come on a boat. If you keep it on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you keep it on there. You know, I mean, from, from a, like a stock bow that you took off the shelf. Or what, white tails what, or black tails or whatever. What were, the, what were the, um, the old ones that had the plastic? Was that a Hunter Supreme? Just the... the it had the metal rod and it had a little plastic flipper out on it with a burger button. That was a flipper rest. It, no, was, it was like... No, no. This was after the flipper. It had the you know, little adjustable plastic. It almost it had a little looked launcher. like a... Yeah. With, oh, yeah. It is I, still... I can't remember what it was. Hunter Supreme. It could have been. Could have been. That's yeah. the one I stuck... Well, I, so one of the deer... One, I mean, I didn't even miss the deer because this was out behind the house and it was a nice six point. I actually killed him with my gun that year because he had, he had one of his brow tines were like broke off or a little mushroom on it. I was sitting right out behind my dad's house and I'd been watching these doe come out into the, into this little cutting. And so my arrow kept falling off that, that little rest. So I pushed it down inside. Like you just oh, push it, it down. It's spring deal. Wasn't it kind of had a little V on it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. And, but we turned it around. And so then like it would sit on it and then against the, the plunger. Well, I pushed it down in there so the arrow wouldn't fall off. You know, I'm like, I got time. I'm watching these deer, or whatever. And then all of a sudden, I hear a noise down here, and there'd been some squirrels, you know, so I wasn't paying attention. All of a sudden, I heard it closer, and I'm like, I looked down on the corner of mine. There he is, like right there at the bottom of my tree, five yards. And then I'm like, it's a buck, six point, you know, and I could see his rack, everything. And so I'm like, turn around, and he kind of walks. And I go to draw back and my arrow's still in there. And it's like, eep. <laughs> and he like looks up at me and, and I finished drawing back and it's like, eep. and then the broadhead hits the riser and the arrow falls off and it goes whoo, whoo, right down in the ground next to him. And he's like, ah, you know, flipping me off, running and laughing at me. But yeah, I had all kinds of, I had, uh, uh, I mean, years, years after that, then we had like, I had those, the metal, it looked like the horseshoe knock, the true knock or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And you had to use a certain, like I actually still have some of them little shorty knocks. But if you didn't have those and you're using a caliper release, I was actually hunting out at the farm and I was with Tom Keniston. Because yeah. I was I wanted to shoot a doe and he's like, Oh, I got lots of does. Come out with me. So I'm sitting there, all of a sudden here comes this doe coming in. And I had my release on and I'd tilted my hand down just enough where i must have just like pushed the knock and i go to draw back same thing draw back arrow whoop, whoop, down next door <laughs> that a couple of different times same thing go to draw the bone in and you know just mm -hmm. all the time deer's looking at me like, what's this <laughs> not that it doesn't happen uh, you know still to today so the question you were really asking me. Too. Well, I just wanted to give like a, an idea for these guys that are just first going out on to, to public land, you know, there, cause there's, there's a lot of guys that, you know, like in the podcast I did with Aaron Blyseen's conversation that we had at, at, at TAC, you know, he's only ever hunted two properties in Michigan and they're both privately owned farms and he scouted a bunch of public and it's like, how do you make the jump? You know, he's, he's, he's well, that, the so, thing is, you know, that we've always, you know, and Earn is probably one of the, the greatest scouters in the history of Polar. You know. Million miles long. Yes, yes. Pre-maps. Pre yes. Well, 
this is all free. This is no onyx. This is no maps. We just legwork. You made a map in your head. Yeah, we just did legwork, you know, all the time, you know. But so, like, let me back this up here because. Well, hold on. Let's back it up to your store. Which yeah, you, you didn't well, sell it your first. Yeah. Well, so uh, again, like I, I had said, the first deer that I ever killed with a bow was with his car. With, with, <laughs> <laughs> was was with Frank, and so I, I mean, I must have been. I was nineteen or twenty, and I'd been hunting since I was twelve. Every year with a bow. Was that with the Air Force arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. strongest arrows known to man. Oh, yes. <laughs> like so. Uh, like you you know first first time i ever went out like it, i think it's told us on here a hundred times but it it never gets any you know worse it's <laughs> it's hilarious you know go out on and i didn't know it was you know it was just michigan state land next to our cottage go out there buy a bag of carrots on the way up there go out set them out i climbed up a tree i don't think i even had sticks i might have had a handful of screw in steps i had a steel uh lock on stand with a chain and clang yeah. and bang set this bay pile at 15 yards get up there no safety harness no nothing take my knife i had carrots in my pocket climbed up the tree <laughs> was that for you or nope shaved them off oh. the deer. Uh, started rubbing them on i got a it was a like an old like whatever the predecessor was to the pse spirit could have been a was it a bracketed bow or did it have split limb? Did not have split limb. It could have been like a pacer. Was it a two wheeler? Two wheeler, yeah. It was probably a pacer. Pacer, pulsar. I, I got had. it out of, if you remember from the Muskegon Chronicle, the freebies, there was a guy out on the corner of Maple Island and Black Creek or something who had all these signs out, golf clubs, all this stuff went over there. And it was Bear Whitetail 2 or that one. And so that's the bow that I bought. So the, the deer were out there. I mean, multiple does out there eating on the bay pile too far away. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe how far these deer were away at 15 yards. I'm thinking, no way, no way. So one comes over, probably a fawn. It was a little deer eating on the carrot shavings that I had dropped. And I shoot straight down, phew, miss. He runs out like at about seven yards, two miss. He take off. Oh, small deer. I, yeah. But I shot at a bunch of deer. I hit one out to my uncle's place, and that was like the quintessential like bend at the I shot a small buck. You know, right through the back straps, just meat all over the thunderhead, the whole thing, and. Then I was like, well, I started to hunt with Frank. Oh, you got to wait for a buck, you know. I will wait for a buck, you know. So I passed a thousand does. Like, they just walk on by. And that's when finally he told me, he's like, you got probably got to get some under your belt, you know. I got a spot for you. He takes me over to those three trees. Put a couple tree steps in it. Get your climber up in there. So here comes a doe and two other deer. First one, I get drawn back duck deer turns around takes off hit it you know i thought it was good shots you know it was maybe 15 yards something like that well then the two deer that were with it run around and they're out there at like 30 yards sparring it's two six points and if i had just let that doe walk past me there's two six points with it. you know so i'm like oh my god and I'm, you know looking through my range finder because i didn't have binoculars and looking at their antlers and all that stuff so then I don't, I don't know what happened. Frank, I think Frank come and got me. And then I got down and shot one. When we tracked this deer for a long time. And I don't know if we jumped her up or whatever happened. But she must have got up and yeah. fell back down or whatever. Oh, get, get, get another arrow in her, you know. So go up there and I shoot. Put one right in the ribs. You know, from me to you away or whatever. Was it a broadhead? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but this this deer's flopping around and that arrow's bent like it flipped over and the arrow was stuck in the ground in a perfect like a u <laughs> and it went then it, it went <laughs> like this you know that was one of the toughest arrows i ever seen and she just flopped over there and 
dead. And I, the first shot must have been like one lung, but it was right behind the shoulder. Yeah. I mean, it was it, it was what I would have considered a great shot. That deer went a long ways. But it was all 15 yards, pretty steep angle. I was up really high. Yeah. Yeah. So that can, that can yeah. happen. With that. So, and that was, that was, you know, public land, state land, just where Frank had hunted his whole life. And it was like, oh, the deer. And now, like, I can go out there and ZZ top my way around and <laughs> run into deer. I mean, that. Well, it's, you know, and the thing is, you know, once you've gotten into a, a place a few times, you know, I mean, become familiar, like the, the spot you've been hunting up there, you know. It's, it's, you know, I mean, it, it becomes kind of secondhand to you, you know what I mean? You kind of know where the deer move, you know, in the mornings and the evenings, you know, or whatever, and you got to play the wind, you know. What's, and what's funny about that, I think we've talked about before, is like, you can go into a spot nowadays, like we've done it, like, and now I continue to do it, go in and start scouting spot, even using my Onyx base map, you know, Spartan Forge, whatever, like, okay, right here is going to be a good spot. And you start getting out there. Oh, yeah, looks good, looks good. And all of a sudden you look up and there's a tree stand from like 1950. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm like, and it's like right in the spot where this is a good spot. It's been a good spot for years. <laughs> you know, it's like. Well, what's funny is when we were up in Baldwin, I went and scouted with Chris Langlois. And oh. he had a spot that he wanted to check out. And I pulled it up and. I'm like, this is where I want to get to. This is where I want to get to. Found some stuff. I mean, walked right to a scrape, you know, and I'm showing him on the map, like, okay, here's, here's what's going on. There's a creek down there and you can see this really thick edge. And this is right on the edge and it's perpendicular. And we just got on a runway and walked it back. And as soon as we found a, a runway perpendicular to it, it wasn't 10 yards, probably not 10 feet. There was a scrape right there. I mean, and it was it, just right there. But to your point about like where other people hunt, we walked into this spot and I, I told him, I said, I don't know where we're going to go, but I said, we're going to walk up here. And it looks like there's a little opening right here. I said, we're going to walk that opening and then we're just going to kind of pick its way down. And what's interesting is, and you guys can probably Ernie can speak to this maybe better than anybody. And we'll, we'll get into that when we get into talking about public land, like looking at it for the first time, but we walked down in there and I'm like, it was, you know, where you're into like scrub pine and like some autumn olive and like, just, it was, it was thick, but it was just nothing, you know, nothing really cool like it wasn't like this looks like a good spot and then it opened up into this giant like big trees and there are some cedars mixed in but big like pole trees like you could have hunted any of these trees and there's runways going through it i'm like right here you could kill a deer like in some i i don't know if it was a deer or whatever because it was what up ahead of us quite a ways but something white took off you know and i think it was a, a but it so but it didn't it didn't like bust out of there it was just kind of like you know when you've bumped a deer that just stands up and just kind of walks away but we found some huge deer poop like you know buck poop like stacked poop that was like i was like you can touch that and it would be like still soft like that was right. you know and we walked all around there found a couple rubs from last year nothing really remarkable but it was certainly like that was the spot, even though it didn't have that stuff. Well, then for what you're saying, John, we come back through and I'm kind of like analyzing it, you know, and I look and I see these two saplings that are broke off. Well, on further review, they've been sawed halfway and then busted off. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I just looked at the angle and I said, that tree right there. And we walked over there. There's two tacks in that tree right there. Yeah. And I couldn't see any climber marks or anything, but. And they were old tax. Right. Could have been like the old TSS that didn't have. But even so, like the spot I hunted up by my property where I seen the, you know, a really decent buck a few years ago. I I was back then we were using on X and I was looking at it and I'm like, and on the swamp, you know, when you're looking at it and you're in it's showing all the little detail for the swamp, there was like a little island. I'm like, and I put a pin on it. And that's where, you know, I went out there and sure enough, it was like rubs and scrapes. Everything went through there. There's good runways. And I was like, all right, this is where I'm going to sit. And then not 10 yards from that, I look and there's a 
old tree stand it was literally like grown like the chain and stuff was grown you couldn't even see the chain and it was about 35 feet now like it was i'm like well it's the same thing like old someone gunner, hunted this old gunner stand yeah those guys love going high but for for you ernie like i say i don't know if i've said it before on here but like when we started filming we're doing all that stuff it's like ernie needs to be the guy with the camera because i'll go out and i'll see two deer and one of them will be 200 yards away or something but what you know one will be there and frank might see a couple deer and he's like yeah i saw 32 uh you know seven bucks i could have shot one of them but you know it just wasn't really what i was looking for and you know ernie is the the scout master as far as like just putting on miles putting on miles putting on miles till you put on a lot of age (laughs) then you tend to slow down (laughs) but again so for a guy that's just like either looking at a map or who is going out onto that piece of property that first time and i'm not talking about finding a big buck necessarily i'm just talking about finding a quantity of deer or to be able to like john said once you've sat there enough times or maybe frank said it you know you start to figure out that property and you start to see like when you were walking around doing all of your scouting or how would you approach a brand new piece of property like you're uh let's see you're going up this this year during bow season to go camping and you're like you know what i'm gonna bring my bow and bring my stuff there's some public over there i've never seen it before but you know i know there's deer in the area that what, used what to be doing? my driving feature there's a piece of land I've never seen. So I had this, I had to see it. I had to see it all. So I, I, I probably rushed through a lot of that. But, you know, now when you think back about it and you put the pictures of the puzzle together and you finally say, well, man, we seen, this is where we killed those deer or something. And this is why. And a lot of it has to do with the lay of the land. Features. Um, I... And the first years, I probably tried to look for the Mecca, you know, there should be 40 rubs here and a bunch of scrapes and see deer every damn night. And, you know, that's just unrealistic, really. And you, but you get, uh, we, we hunted places, and Frank and I did, that had good deer numbers. So I think it was a little bit easier for us. But I learned the ability to bottleneck those deer by what I seen and a perfect example, uh, you hunted there a little bit, that most recent place we hunted. Where you, where you shot the two? They nice oh, eight yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. This well, one. we put that together basically because we know, I know everything. I know all the land, I don't know, 3000 acres, I guess. But we had to figure out I said, there's a way these deer are going from food, which was obviously the croplands up there. And then where's the most likely spot they're going to neck down? No, I'm not saying all the deer are doing that. I just wanted to get into where a lot of the deer were doing that. Well, it ended up being, and I called it before, I called it an hourglass. You know, one end of it's the food. And then we found places where maybe uh, a line, uh, big i don't know if you want to call it a, some form of old gas line or something but something and it would bring them down and the lay of the land would bring them through an area yeah, pitch, now that area may point. be 100 yards wide so at that point you you maybe pick out a spot or two like we always did think about the wind of course you get screwed up a lot in the mornings because it coming one way going the other but anyways we just we developed the pinch points um, it, probably in my first few years, it was just hunting runways, but my brothers told me to make sure there's fresh tracks. So that's what we knew about hunting back then. So it developed, the more I looked at, the more I looked at, the more you absorb that. And we didn't have, you know, today's when we first started, technology, I should say. When we first started hunting with me, like out there, we would go into an area. You know, and I'd been, you know, through that stuff before. 
but we'd walk in there, he'd just walk around a little bit, you know, and look, and he'd go, he'd look at me and he goes, anything look good to you? <laughs> I said, yeah, that tree right there. And he, you'd kill him, wouldn't you? Oh, I'd, yeah. I'd, he'd get in that tree, man, and boom. You well, know? But well, it's, it's, it's knowing, like you say, the, right, it's, the it all land comes land and what's going on there, you know. It's like the trailer, it's a, you, you the, the knowledge that yeah. that's what everyone's looking for well, I, you know and like i say if they if they do have a piece of a public it doesn't have to be crop lands or anything like that it could be a forest could be anything you know what i mean yeah swamp you just you just have to concentrate on the deer sign in that area that you're going to hunt or you want to hunt you know right and, and and that's where you want to see the most the most activity Okay, so look for the fresh sign. So one of the things, like I, I think, like I say, Ernie is an incredibly efficient hunter as far as um, it, just walking in and finding deer. But I think, like, I, I don't know, and I, I want to hear the story. I think maybe you've told it on here before, John. Um, but like Frank, I feel like no matter where he goes, you can bring him to a new spot. My, our property in the up is a perfect example where he just walks around and he goes yeah that's a tree and he can kill a buck out of like any tree but the time he went hunting up with you oh yeah and I'm back to wall hall yeah <laughs> but you, you know that, yeah. that's your spot and he says hey um what do you say Je you going hunting today like hey can i ride along yeah, like yeah you're going again tomorrow I'm like yeah i'm going back to the same spot all right. Oh, all right and this is a morning hunt right it's a morning hunt <laughs> And so we, you're walking in in the dark like walking in the dark i'm like all right i'm just going right down on this side of the pines he's like all right i'm just gonna walk down here i think i seen a couple deer and then walk down yeah i shot one I'm like, what <laughs> yeah he's 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 dead right over there <laughs> <laughs> I, well, walked, I walked it. we got we got out of the truck and johnny went south you know and i i just i was standing there you know what i thought I'm gonna go towards that swale through the pines, you know. It was just kind of. But you knew the area, though, like. Yeah. You, I mean, but it wasn't. Yeah. And it was just kind of getting a little gray, like you know, and I and I tall pines, you know, and I was walking through, and I get down to the edge of that that swale, you know, and I'm saying, just don't go here. I'm like, yeah. I just started walking to the north. I actually crossed the spot where that deer came to, you know, mm -hmm. and I looked. Yeah, that tree right there, you know. So I get up that tree. And what did you see on the ground that told you that's the just, tree? Just it was the edge, the edge of those pines. Yeah, it was like a well, it was like three things came together. Yeah. It's the edge of the pines, then land it was the like land. the hardwoods, yeah. and then that swale. Yeah. And it was like you're saying, it was just like it was that transition between all the different prop or the you know. And I and I just looked at the, I just looked and it was starting to get light then, you know. I got the wrong tree. How many times have we done that? go to a place that we know of we haven't been there in a year maybe two all right let's go in there this morning get up the tree we know where we want to be we ain't looked at it you get up and you're going holy shit there's a buck up oh, there's a buck up there's oh there's a scrape and i was hunting the same exact thing at the other end right you know i was yeah. just on yeah. the south side of it because that's it was what are those school pines that we call them you had some scrapes in there too they yeah there's some scrapes and, scrapes and there was some good runways that were cutting across it was but I was down the swale where it was a little bit wider and there were some that runways that cut across that he was right up at the point almost. Yeah. And well, like what, you, what you're talking about her is that's like where I killed that 10. Like I said, I want to go in there because it's the only place I've ever seen deer like running around everywhere, like run, yeah. you know, like bucks on bucks on bucks. And I mean, it was fun. I was pained. It was so late. It was daylight, like way daylight. <laughs> well, it was, it was a long do, walk. <laughs> didn't have to do ZZ, right? <laughs> and, and... Well, it, so we set Frank at where he normally goes, and then me and Ernie cut back. I don't know even know what way that is. It's north northwest. I told I told them guys I got I was, as far as I'm a, a little said, little north of northwest. This yeah. Is my tree right here. I said I'm staying here. <laughs> I said, you, you know, and I said, take him up to the edge of the, you know, thing and go down, have him go down, you know. Well, I, I used to hunt a, a place up there and I loved it. It was an inside corner, huge grass and brush marsh, and you couldn't get them out of there with dogs. I mean, but they, a lot of the good ones won't come out of that, but they'll use the edges. 
So you'd get in there and you'd see all the buck signs thinking, well, you know, they'll come out these runs. Well, they rarely did. They'd stay in there and stuff, but that corner was neat. It just made a great little corner. So Adam and I are going down there. He said he wanted to hunt that corner. Well, I wanted to be in that, the hay marsh. Like I yeah. wanted to be in there and well, we it's... got to the end and Ernie's like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to get lost. And I don't know where I was because Frank put me there before. I just know I want to be down in here, down in there. Well, somewhere. after trudging through all that stuff for like 1.1 miles, I said, Adam, I'm going to sit on the edge of it here. And you go down there until you come to that corner. It's going to be tough to see, but it's going to be light enough to where there's grass. And then it makes a corner and then there's another open woods like that. And but it's that corner is it's a big deal. Way daylight. And it's, I don't know, six or eight inches of water. So you're just go blues, go blues, go blues, go blues. And I'm like, this is so fucking futile. Like this is <laughs> this is absurd. And then, then tell me. <laughs> What, what really sunk your heart well he gets up in the tree right yeah well so i get out there and i'm like looking back to see where ernie's at i'm like look into the corner i'm like what's going on because i didn't know i didn't know how far i was supposed to go i didn't all know the way to the corner well i didn't i made it you were almost. close yeah. you I, were he was 10 or 15 yards from where you shot a deer in there that year that chris shot a deer so i just walked down walked down and i got like to where i could see that it it turned the corner but i wasn't like right on the corner but i think because of the way the wind was going i was like well i think this is probably as good as it's going to get and i looked and i'm like that tree has like an island so i can set my stuff not in the water so <laughs> like that's uh, ultimately what made my decision and i we are high, high, hunting out of those uh xop setups so i had four 90 foot long sticks one down two down and this was the first year so i was not very efficient three down four down stand sweating my balls off i'm i'm in the old sweater wool sweater from uh goodwill and a freaking my hat was like gross like i could smell it so i know that the deer could smell it and i'm <laughs> like i'm like whatever and it was i felt like it was like 11 o'clock by the time i got set up but it was probably 8 30 and i'm sitting there i got my i'm screwing in my bow hanger you know i hang my bow and i look back there like 60 yards behind me there's a ladder stand i'm like oh my god <laughs> this is just kicking dumb. the balls but that was the same thing is like that was a spot where i knew that i wanted to be back in there because i i had seen bucks in there in the past and even if it was like i had no idea where i was it was like, I want to get back to that spot. You know where it's at. Take me back in there. And you said, well, go that way. And then I, you know, I shot the deer and it died right there and it's cool. And I'd already killed a deer. And I, or he's like, I seen you go up and down the tree like a whole bunch of times. And yeah, I could just see you a little bit part of the time. So I got down, found the deer, got back up the tree. You know, I did all my stuff, cleaned out the deer and it was laying there. And uh, I got back up the tree and I sat there for like two seconds and I was like, I don't even have a tag. Like, <laughs> so I just packed up my stuff and I sat at the bottom of the tree, ate a fudge around. And, like, and then finally Ernie ate comes over <laughs> and he's like, he's like, what are you doing? And I, I'm I, tagged out. I told him I shot a spike and uh, <laughs> I hung the nuts up in a tree, right? Very, very in clear view of that ladder stand. <laughs> and uh <laughs> real nuts i was i was pointing i was pointing at the nuts but the deer was past it i said i said hey look he's, he's right over there and uh, ernie seen the nuts hanging in the tree and he's like he's like oh and then he goes oh adam and, I was like, <laughs> and, and, and honestly i felt bad because like at when we were at that juncture ernie's like well do you want to go that way or do you want to set up right here and i'm like i don't know i don't even know where i'm at you know <laughs> I mean, I knew where, I knew where Frank was, but I, I hadn't done enough scouting over in that area to know exactly where I was at. So it was just chance, you know, <laughs> but I felt bad. Cause I was like, you know, that could, Ernie, that could have been Ernie 
<laughs> shooting that deer just as easily because that was just but it was a cool day but it was same thing like on a corner on an edge and there was like high ground that came down into that right so you got different you know transitions all coming together but i think too um i don't know if you'd have seen that deer hadn't you called oh i did I see think. what you I did was giving him the business right man. you pulled him out of <laughs> well, yeah, well, so, this, so it was funny it was when he's telling me the story he had you had killed that six point up in the up yep. come back and then you're telling me a story you're like yeah well the spike horn come in and i was calling at the spike horn I'm like what do you call a spike horn for why well, well, ask like, ernie like, earlier in the day what are we shooting today because we're in a cwd zone it's <laughs> anything goes and i'm like what are you just screwing with the spike he's like no i was gonna shoot him i was like what? oh yeah <laughs> well I, I asked ernie specifically what's what's the deal and i think at that time you hadn't shot any deer and you said i'm shooting whatever anything i'm like all right game on you said yeah. one of the repeat didn't it? one of those oh same year not that year drew shot one year before and i shot one. i thought there was the didn't we have three hanging? I don't know. Yeah. yeah I Maybe. Thought, I thought you did shoot one. Yeah. We had three hanging. At, at Somebody made a hanging. comment that we killed the whole family <laughs> <laughs> or something. Yeah. That's Was possible. that yours? Yeah. Could have been. Yeah. yeah. You killed that six and they each killed a dog. Yeah. Yeah. And yours must have been littler than yours. Smaller than. <laughs> Yeah, a little smaller than yours. Yeah, a little bit smaller. <laughs> but but to go up and clear a point up <laughs> when you went in there and I come over there and seen that deer, I was just as damn happy for you as if I'd have killed it. Probably I was probably happier. Yeah, then they both lied to me. Oh yeah, we set oh, Frank yeah, up yeah. really good. I, I knew then we made him walk all run. the way out there. <laughs> I looked in his jacket or his shirt or whatever was over the deer's head. I goes. It ain't no goddamn spike. I mean, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I knew he shot me. But we were walking back through there, and I said, "He's going, goddamn, it's just all water." And I go, oh, "It won't go over your boots." You know, yeah, it does. Sweat. Like so in my next nuts. Step you took was like, <laughs> like it was like, yeah, yeah, probably where a stump used to be. <laughs> it was funny as shit. Oh, it was perfect time, and you missed a buck that day too. Or you? Didn't get a you didn't get a shot. Oh, no, that's the one that come across the gas line there. And that was before Ernie and I were even like considering trees. <laughs> there was snow that morning. Yeah. yeah. Cause it was snowing. Thank God too. Cause I was overheated <laughs> 30 <laughs> some pounds on my back, a mile and a quarter back in drudging through all that stuff. But I sure wish I was 25 then. When switched and that went down. But I'd killed a deer, a uh, buck out of that tree earlier. And Is that when you killed that five point? I think so. Like yeah. two days after your birthday or on yeah. your birthday or something. Yeah. Did I it? drug that one out of there too. <laughs> thank you again <laughs> that's quite a hype too <laughs> oh yeah but so you know ernie you keep saying like features it's just features it's just features like what do you mean by that like i said let's let's go back so let's say in that scenario like you have to kill a deer on this piece of public land that you've never been to before like what what are you doing first of all you're looking for deer sign you know Shit. but as you no yeah. no no not as a uh i'm saying what are you going to do like what is your process right now because you're saying like you need to do this you need to do this but what are you say say all right well what i'm going to do is i'm going to today yeah if you have to kill one by friday on a piece of public land that you've never been to before you drive up you pull into the parking lot get all your stuff on. do i get on it yeah you've got okay spartan forge you've you've got the whole okay. gamut you know the prominent wind direction i am definitely looking at the features of that land immediately and what are you looking for heavy cover i want to know hopefully they're betting somewhere on that property then that you take a lot of the work out of it if they're bedding there all right then if you have to go well if you're hunting like that day if i don't have no pre-scouting 
pre well, you've, got, you've I, got three days so you okay. can you may bump a deer or two but i'm gonna go in and use the onyx now so i don't have to walk the whole damn thing you know and booger it up and then i would pick some points to look at on that and what do those points look like well it depends on the land you know the land is so much different if there's water involved i love walking cricks love them um they'll give they'll tip their hat to you on a crick a lot so so this is just hunting a deer though right any deer, a deer. not not fox or anything like that. not big bucks not anything yeah okay. um probably the most important thing when them deer come off those beds or in the beds it isn't long and there's gonna they're gonna show you the sign they're gonna shit everywhere or whatever and all the way to their feeding so and they go back and forth right so i'm looking at him and i look for that a lot fresh fresh poop i go by like deer tracks and, and so i've heard this on the, in the marco polo group and i've heard guys say it and it's something that i think we all take for granted but like when you're looking at a map so when you're looking at on X Spartan Forge base map, whatever, and you're looking at that map, what is it that shows you betting? What does betting look like? You can use the, the well, betting many different things, and it depends on the animals. You know, I've seen them bed up on tops of ridges where they had cover and, and whatnot. Uh, the big, the big heavy covered areas, the uh, a lot of wet stuff, but then the high spots in the wet stuff so it, it depends i mean without ever seeing a piece before um and using like satellite imagery and i would go for the the dense the more dense places in there look at the um topographical portion of that the, the high spots and low spots you know some of them deer are queer for those you know low spot between the ridges it's not pride month anymore oh uh, uh, you know that's it's a hard question to me but um because i come from a background of just looking everything over anyways and i still do it today if i hunted a new piece i'd probably blow that first day up so like because i want to be ready for day two and three right so you're gonna kind of go in maybe not as hot as you normally would it's called scout hunt yeah yeah and kind of sit back and maybe do an ob observation hunt sit and, and another thing too, if, if you know you're in where you want to be and that first observation hunt's key yeah that i find some of the big national forest lands everybody wants to go back to this swamp area or whatever it's a mile you know off the road and all that don't overlook a hundred yards off the main road <laughs> so I'm telling you what, right now, I I know for a fact that you can kill good deer or numbers of deer within a quarter of a mile of a, of a black top busy road. Isn't well, there the one spot up by your trailer that I went where you're sitting basically on the road on that curve yeah. over off of that highway? Mm -hmm. Like you oh, we can usually tell you what make the automobile is that comes down through them. But I mean, that spot where one spot over there where I had to he, he killed the one on his birthday, that little tiny three point on his birthday. That, that was just down the road, though. But the other spot was right on the road. Yeah, there was a scrape there and there was a rub. And yeah. you're like, I'm going to sit right there. And oh, like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's on the curve and of the I road. I didn't have a tree, so I put my stand on the bottom of the tree that morning. <laughs> and something was back behind me, away from the road. And the scrape was right in front of me, you know, toward the road. Oh, now he could have shot the road. Yeah, I kid oh, yeah. you not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A thirty yarder. Was, yeah, but it's yeah. not a very busy road. Just no, saying, no. <laughs> not not too bad. No. It's yeah. a it's backcountry dirt road. It's a know? dirt road. It's not. Yeah, but I'm yeah, just saying. There, there was something back in there behind me, and I kept looking back. I'm looking back, looking back. You know, and I'm thinking, I don't know what it is. Turned around, here's this goddamn eight point standing right there on the scrape, man, right in front of me. You know, and I'm going, oh crap, you know. So he, he's kind of looking up in there at me, and I got, I, I took this pine tree and stuck it in the ground, you know, in front of me. And I, you know, I'm freaking out, you know, I'm thinking, oh, it's a dandy, you know, and he's, so all of a sudden he's getting nervous. Well, then he takes that run to the right, you know, it goes, kind of goes up and behind where I was at. I had an opening there and I shot him, shot him, I 
that, that's one of them spots you know it's just like and it, it's always there anyway. and we had a name for that spot johnny yeah yeah it was the pride month spot yes yes <laughs> <laughs> You know, that thing never looked that good, I don't think, since that year. No, it's been, there's, there's been, it's been okay, on, but you know, I mean, that thing was so, so nasty looking. It was tore up. There was two oh. spots there that just, it looked like they took shovels. In there, you know? And Frank's the kind of guy who said, well, I'll sit there. Yeah. You know, a guy like me, well, you know, to I, well, I got to be a mile off the, the road. And, and you know, yeah. here's the thing. Guys would say, oh, you're gonna sit that, you know, during the, that's happening at night. No, it ain't. It was like nine o'clock in the morning that that deer came. Right. You know? So that's like the spot. So like the the first year we hunted Ohio. Yeah. You know, like oh, well, I mean, I was barely yeah, I was, was barely walking. Was and so we're going in. I didn't do any of the scouting, nothing, and we're walking in like there was all kinds of but it was literally on the freaking like I've got you, my bicycle, got off it, and threw it in the ditch next to the freaking two track. Yeah. And the only thing about but, that spot was it no was vehicles. So yeah, yeah, no no vehicles. But walk. I mean, but it was like just walk out. I'm like, well, anyone else want to sit here? Nope. Oh well, well, shit! I seen nice buck, shot a decent buck. You know. Yeah. But yeah, so so that's the thing is like now having gone through this process of you know basically learning to hunt public and read sign and then talking to you know all of these guys that are breaking down how to kill big deer and i think one of the things that frank has always been like i mean just about fisticuffs with you don't need to kill these big deer they're you know they're I do just fine, like doing this. And, you know, John and I, or Ernie, we think about these things and like, okay, we need to do this. But I think what's happened is, is that it's allowed us to get on more deer and better deer. Now that it might not be, you know, world-class deer, but we're getting into the spot where deer want to be. But one of the things that I took for granted, like when I was young and you know, I, I wasn't appreciating like all of the, the learning that I was getting. It was like, I go out, get drunk, and then I go hunt in the morning. I'm tired. So I sleep all the way to wherever Frank takes me. And then I go out there and we hunt. See Hopefully deer, we don't we? throw up. See deer. But then at the end of the hunt was like, I just want to get back home because I got stuff to do or whatever. You know, I'm just going to, it's just going to be a morning hunt. But what did we used to do all the time, Frank? We drove all these two tracks. I just want to check this spot. And we go and we drive oh. slow with your head out the window. Dude. Looking I, at all these You know tracks. how many hours I did that with my dad and Frank? Like, why are we driving these freaking dirt roads? Like, we're done hunting. And it's like, oh, yeah, you see those tracks? Oh, yeah. Look at that trail. Look at, yeah. hey, hey, you see hey, that? Henry, your side. Henry, look at that side. Look, look at this. <laughs> I'm like sitting back there, like, can I get a pop or something? Like, <laughs> I want to take a nap. Pizza, pop. But we, <laughs> but, you, but that's you how it, it was. You took it for granted. Yeah, you, you well, that's I mean? how it was. I mean, I remember. I mean, hours. Like that's all we did is just drive around and looking, looking. You know, two tracks and dirt roads. Just, and I remember even like there was times where my dad, my old man, would be like, "Hey, go grab that pine bow." Freaking. Oh, yeah. drag it down the road oh, yeah. <laughs> like well, well we don't want people seeing all those that, tracks <laughs> that, that year that i killed that 10 or maybe the year before but it's another it's another place you know super duper heavily the most public land hunted place in our area probably bar none right walking down the two track and you guys had a spot right on the two track the 10 point right where you just, just go right there there's always tracks in the scene well frank told me you know just to get to his spot like oh you can cut in at this little water hole and there's an old logging road right there well just in off that logging road was some big sign and it was a year before that's why there was a gigantic track right there the one morning when i was coming out and i knew that there was 14 other other guys in there and i'm like 
<laughs> I'm like, I'm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish I had a dime for every track I snuffed out. Oh, just the big ones. Start walking in them, you know. Yeah. Walk in them, you know. Kind of turn your feet, you know. Oh. Make it look like a hundred guys are yeah, in there. Yeah, the guy, well, you're all Go change your boots. Add more thumbtacks <laughs> to the side. <laughs> well, I've done a bunch of stuff like. I, I've cut down big rubs, like trees that are destroyed. Like, zzz, 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 zzz. like you know, I mean, the butt comes in, like, oh, fuck, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, I didn't, you know, no, I just, I'm just like, I don't want people to see, you know. But for, the, for the most part, you know, like if, if guys know, know an area, though, and, and just just get your boots on and go walk it, get your compass out, you know. And, and you need to be able to adjust quickly too. Right. Well, if you're hunting the opener and stuff, I think you need to be able to adjust to the pressure early oh, because right. there's going to be, they're going to get bumped and they're going to be somewhere and you got to figure out where those deer want to be at that point. And hopefully like we were in the right spot, basically those few years in there because I knew what was going to happen when the people went say up front or whatever I knew and they hunted down on that end of the, closer to the cars i knew it was going to bump them like that so even, you know and like bring them through there even in that spot like in that little area like most guys walking are like well, why are you even hunting right here yeah they don't even they, they don't realize but because it, it's like big woods yeah but then there's like kind of marshy stuff but inside that a lot of the guys don't realize that there's like there's like a line of smaller trees. It doesn't look like much when you're walking, but to a deer, that is a, that's a, like a, a transition and they're going to use, so they got all this big woods, right? They're going to use that little bit of cover that's within it. And most guys like, I mean, for years, I'd be like, I'd think the same thing. Like, why the hell are you, would you hunt right here? Why would the deer? Adam, Adam and, and John found out just exactly how thick that was. Well, but that's, <laughs> but, but that's exactly what I was going to say is like, on on the infamous zz top hunt right we just were on the back side of that right and we came through all this thick stuff and as soon as we came out of the thick stuff we just got up a tree and that's exactly what those deer did the exact same thing yeah you know and they were right just inside or actually they were on the other side of that edge yeah. and then they cut around the end of it that's 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 the deal you know like most a and, lot of guys would say they'll walk walk a trail and they just you know i don't know if they're just looking for mecca you know or whatever you know guilty of it you know but i and don't realize what what's there right and even you know like i so like nowadays i'll get on my you know whatever app i'm using base map spartan forge and i'll sit there so i'm going to go to a new area or even an area i've hunted for years but just looking at it from a different point of view yeah you know and i always use my topo like i do the the hybrid or whatever because that way it's showing all the little you know the elevation changes and, that, and even a little bit of an elevation change is, is big to a deer like i mean that's going to be a little bit of cover or it might give them a little bit of, you know more visual you know advantage but oh, well that's where your ground cover changes too exactly and so once you that's what i'm looking at so i'm looking at that and, you know the swamps and marshes and like you can even zoom in how many times we've done it like zoom in on a cattail marsh or whatever and you're like those are runways yeah and then if you look at those runways you look out and depending on the imagery you know the quality of it you'll see like one tree one or... tree like out in like in all those runways go to that tree and then there'll be another big tree over here it's like they use those as a marking oh, yeah, post out in there see it and then you can see and that's how you know that's how i hunt that one uh, the swamp well not far picture yourself going to john's market you're gonna go the route you always go right well pitch your hunting pressure on those deer doing that right. well you got other routes right yeah and that's you know it's a good analogy to think about like when the hunt pressure comes and during the season, your seasonal changes and adaptations to it, the deer are going to be there, right? Thing is too, yeah. is, is early season, like early bow season with all the cover you have, you know, those deer might just come out anywhere. Right. You know what I mean? Because there's so much foliage, you know what I mean? And you, but you have to think about as the season progresses, leaves fall, 
you know what I mean? That just change, everything changes, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, and one of the things like what you were talking about, John, like I said, like on that ZZ Top hunt and how it's just a little bit thicker right there is if it's something that most guys would walk around, like that's kind of where the deer are using right. that same way. It's like, if you're like, I don't want to go through there, the deer are probably like, that's where I'm going to be safe, being able to work right through the edge yep. of this so I can still see what's out there. You know, but I got some cover. But I got some cover, and, and I got somewhere they, to bail. Right, and then when they stop, you can't. For, you know, like. Well, think there. about what you just said about old Bullwinkle. There, he went down into the thick stuff. Yeah, and got his bearings, and then yep, boogie. yeah, he went right into right. the cuttings, and then stopped, and then exactly, and then took off. So, so for you guys, Frank and Ernie, and we'll kind of wind this up. But when you're out there like a new piece of public or whatever, like what would you say just trying to kill any deer in any spot is the most important piece of sign that you're looking for? Yeah. What, what? Tracks and crap, you know, fresh. Fresh, fresh. yeah. Any fresh. deer, yeah, I. that's the traffic. And, and if there's any, you know, if there's any acorns falling or anything like that, you know what I mean? Depending on, you know, is is their forage there for them, you know, in that spot or not? Or are they moving to another spot and you know bedding over here or whatever, you know? So poop, poop and track. For me it's pinch points because when I get to the pinch points, usually that the traffic is there. So let's kind of work through that just just a hair and say, you know, given the opportunity for one hunt, are you leaning towards morning or evening i you know one sit yep wow oh what time of year early, early, early season so second week, second week of the season morning morning okay for for what reason i mean i can get in there pretty early and get into where i i know i want to be because they're probably not going to be bedding that far away so I'm going to try to be realistically on a pinch point where deer are gathering and maybe it's a cedar edge, thick cedar edge or, or, or a cattail edge or a crick or whatever. It's making, it, it's kind of, they're kind of feeding down into that. And then they try to find where they're, they bunch up a little bit and then they'll probably all go away again. But again, it's that, I don't know, hourglass. I, I love to call it an hourglass. Shot at that bucky. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Three. Three. Oh, let's see. Well, two, three. But now, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Where you know where you sat. Where did deer come from? I don't know. They came out of that. Picture. They were I, moving I, east. I, I didn't know. Yeah. No, Correct. No. Were, so so towards so the heart. so for guys that are you know, trying to say like, oh, that one hunt of that one time. So we're up there near Ernie's trailer. And you say, well, we're going to go down here. And I don't know if you said your brother hunted in there or something. Like, well, he had a, he, I, he I had a hunted a little bit there, but he, you, I was going to send you basically in a lot farther than he goes, you know, because if you look at, if you take a big picture of where you were at, you were on the east edge of some really nice, heavy cover. And that goes all the way past the back of our trailer into a big, dry cedar swamp, uh, 30 very, acres. Very okay, where they like to come out a lot of times because of the presence of people like my brother and whoever might be hunting by the road. Well, then they come and there's a cedar, a big, dark cedar finger that runs down there. And I would almost guess, you know, you didn't really explain a lot about, I know what you've well, seen well, I can, and I know what you. Well, I can tell you what I did. So th that's where they said, okay, go up here. And I don't know, the creek must come down that hill. Yeah. There's a so, creek comes back. so it was another, I think if I am like uh, pessimistic about the hunt, like it's going to go well <laughs> <laughs> because I, I get there and I'm walking down this creek. Just a little feeder that dumps into another one. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, they're like, oh, just go up there, you know, and do this and that. 
and I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I'm going. And it started to rain. And I'm like, oh, this is tremendous, you know, <laughs> like awesome, just great. So I get, I, I follow this creek up to the top of this hill, and there's like this little eddy, but it, it like must be right on that cedar finger because there's a big You're cedar. Close. There's yeah. a big cedar tree behind me, and it was it made this really hard like three corner. All this stuff came together, and I was, you know, from where them deer came from, I was probably sixty yards, if that way is east to the south of that and so i i just got up this tree where i could see a long ways and that's i mean if it was gun season that would have been great like not knowing all the things now like i should have been back on the corner of all the thick stuff i'm sitting there and i'm getting rained on and i'm calling i'm giving them this because i'm like this is dumb like this hunt is you know i'm just just sitting here just waiting for it to get dark so i can get warm and dry again (laughs) go eat and then all of a sudden like here comes a little buck and then a little bigger buck and then a pretty nice buck you know and uh they're just walking right inside of that cedar edge and they come and you know i got stood up i'm turned around got my bow it was probably 40 yards behind me this little buck goes underneath the cedar tree and then this the next buck was like a six point come underneath the cedar tree and that big buck was going to do the same thing so i just i gave out a big grunt and then i snort wheezing and his head turned up and he looked my way and he just walked and there's a runway that 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 i was on that's that's why i sat there there's a big crossing on the creek and he was coming down that runway well the the wind was like bad it was going like i was on the right side of the runway but he was circling around the runway and so that was the year i killed the big one in ohio because that deer looked up at me and he was like right there at 15 yards probably and i could have shot him in the white patch on the throat but i was like oh no i won't do that then i was shooting them leftover schwackers that you guys had (laughs) <laughs> these guys so in my hunting career up until very recently it's like i shot hand me down i shot ernie's arrows i shot frank's arrows i shot all these broadheads that have just been like oh i got these i got these like yep throw them in the quiver like look yep yep mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so the then that deer started cutting back into the wind like w- where the wind was going to get me for sure and i just drew back and picked the opening and you know you probably all heard the story where smashes a tree all that lighted knock and all the (laughs) fletchings go over his back and i just see him going "Ah," like in slow motion but that spot was where all the three things came together like and i can probably add to that of course if you'd have walked in yeah that's your first time in there yeah i never even seen it and you just snuck up there okay here's look at that edge there and you're walking a great edge Mm-hmm. okay cover water food uh roadway what cedar edge i know what they're doing after that they're going to the big oak forest and then to the north of there about a quarter mile is a private field a guy maintains real well they were going to go up there and see their girlfriends you know there's no doubt in my mind but that's i've always liked that i've never went in there the reason why we went in there is because my brothers weren't going to be around and i i told them we were going but I don't hunt that because of them. That is a good spot. But it was just, you know, just walking in there and you guys said, you know, and I listened a little bit, but because it's always like, <laughs> I mean, you have to, how understand. many times did we try to put him and Chris right where they needed to be? But you That's, have to, you, I mean, John knows, like, how do they tell you to go like, to a spot? Yeah. You're like, okay, you go 50 yards up, you'll see this rock on the left. You know, that's the, that's the JB rock. And then you go up past that and then you'll see this. The tree. FA tree. Yeah, you know, this. <laughs> and then, you know, you'll see Fred the frog. And then, yeah, I'm like. Careful of the toilet paper. Yeah, you know, it's, or. 
or if you're driving up to the spot, you turn at Earl's house. I'm like, who the fuck is Earl? He does that you know, crap like, to me he, all the time. Used, you know, you know he used to drive that square body that, that 78, you know, you know, with the rough spot on the side. Right. That Earl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I get to the point where, <laughs> where when Uncle Frank said, yeah, uh, you know, Mike, Mike Smith. You know, yeah, Mike Smith. Yeah, yep, used, yep. Used okay, move on. <laughs> <laughs> and and so that's the way that they tell you to go into a spot, and especially in the dark. It's like, it's like, all right, you're going to go up there and you're going to see it's going to start to get like light, but not too light. Cause there's, if you, if it's really light, then you went too far and you need to go back <laughs> and then it's going to get really dark. And then there's in, in the trail, you're going to see some ferns. <laughs> and when you see the ferns, you just keep going straight. As soon as you get to the edge of the ferns, then you need to cut towards the light spot and you're going to see two trees. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of trees around, but there's two trees. You'll notice them. You'll know these, these are trees. I mean, they're, they're round and they're tall and they got branches on them. How, how far off are we, Frank? Well, Still spot on. It's all about years, the details. Last year, we hadn't been in the spot. We were going to do it in the middle of the We walk back and we get to the edge of the, you know, to the, to the pines and stuff. And there's a strip of cedars right there. And then there's swamp out there. So we get back there, and Chris goes, oh, we can hang that, you know. And I'm going, well, I'm going to sit right here, you know. There's a nice tree right there. I said, you know. He goes, well, what should I do? I said, go down this edge. I said, go down the cedar just follow it down there. I said, and it'll start turning, you know, it'll turn to the south and head back towards these tall pines. I says, when you get around to that point, you'll look in that swamp and you'll see that edge comes in from the, you know the swamp i said sit right there you know he missed the biggest buck that he's ever shot at that night mm -hmm. <laughs> he, didn't, and, he didn't have a range finder and, and he shoots shoots underneath him so did you did you hear about chris setting up for tack and us going and shooting that bow no he's like this bow is way off he's shooting my old bow mm -hmm. with it's got that cameron haynes spot hug on it right? yep. it's set up 20 30 40 40 being the floater yep. set the dial at 40 right yeah so what is the reason that chris missed this buck is he had probably hadn't even taken that bow out of the case since <laughs> tack or he shot it at home. It was set at 40. He shot the top pin, 20. I'm good. Right. He gets out hunting and he looks down and he's like that. I think that deer is 30 yards away. So he dials it to 30 <laughs> shoots with the top pin and but, shoots right underneath it. Yep. So we go to set up for tack and he's like this it, sight tapes way off. And you know, he was shooting, seven different arrows frank's old arrows ernie's old arrows my old arrows none of them are the same point weight and he's shooting and he's like man i, I don't know what's going on and he's like i gotta turn it to 40 to even hit anything and i said try that bottom pin at 40 well it's right on he's like oh my god that's why i missed that buck <laughs> he says because i dialed it to 30 and oh no, like, yeah at that point, shot is fixed pen. They're, yeah. they're set don't mess with it it's 40 and oh <laughs> and i know we told him that but it's just that's christopher and uh if you shot with him at tack you know 12 of them are 12 or dick <laughs> and excellent right yeah so but yeah like i say you guys here from are from a much different era and, and one of the things i wanted to know and, and john you can probably speak to this a little bit but like when was it that you started and i'm not saying that you do um but started to like pay attention or it that came into the fray was inches because like i said i grew up like with oh that was a big eight point oh that was a really big eight point you know oh he shot a 10 like there was never, but you said, oh, I shot a 17 and a half inch inside buck. Like when did score become the so thing? it wasn't, I mean, I've never even scored my bucks, but it was, it got to the point. It was 
actually like when I killed my 10 point with my gun. And that was like the last year I actually gun hunted then because I'm like, man, I got, I got two wall mounters now. And I'd seen, there was another nice buck out behind my dad's house. And I actually like the next year I hunted it with my bow and then it got the rifle season. I'm like, I'm going to keep hunting this buck with my bow and end up the neighbor killed it. But I mean, like from that point on, I mean, I still killed bucks. I mean, you know, little six points, whatever, but it was more about just being out and, you know, but I mean, like when it became at least in your world, like trying to kill a bigger buck. No, like culture to be like, what do you score though? Oh, uh, well, I guess it's never really come but, back. Cause but, I've never but, scored it, but people say that, right? Yeah. Around people say you. that. So yeah. what, how long ago did people. Well, it was probably around the, when we first started going to Ohio, really. I mean, like when social media really started kicking in, that's, that's a big that's part of it. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, so for Frank and Ernie, for you guys, like, you know, you worked at the sport shop back in the day. Did people ever talk about score? Yeah, not really. No. No, is it more like I got a 10 point? You know, yeah, he was like 20 inches inside. You know yeah. I mean? it, was, it was like, you know, that that's how I knew the, the you know, the, yeah, the you battle. rarely heard someone say, well, I shot a 150. Well, and that's no, like, no, he never. But that's like when I killed that buck in Ohio, you're like, that's my dream buck because it's 20 inches inside. Like 20 that. inch in sky. Yep. And score 150. Yeah. So that was like, so like when, like back a big buck, it, yeah, we killed eight points, whatever, six points, eight points, 10 point. But it was more, it wasn't about the inches of the whole rack. It was like, I killed a 10 point with a 20 inch spread, or I killed my eight point with a 17 and a half inch spread. That was like, just to give a, a, a perspective perspective yeah. of it yeah. like that was a day and, and that's all we did yeah that's all we did we didn't score them but, but body but, weight too you know yeah body like oh man you know I, i've shot some some fucked up deer you know what i mean and and way close to 200 pounds you know what i mean that meant more to me than you know yeah like a big five deer fingers on one side it was probably i probably got into enjoying shooting the like two and a half year olds and, and up like that. I remember I went a lot of years. I wouldn't shoot one unless it was, I was sure it was two and a half or more, but you know, we're living here. We're in public land. You know, I wasn't to the point where I was going to shoot nothing under a three or four and a half year old deer. Okay. But numbers. What last 10 years. Yeah. If they exploded. Yeah. Like, like I said, it was like when we started going to Ohio, I think it was, when the number yeah it's number probably been came. that long huh so yeah. so to close this out from the uh it, it's not going to be a garbage man story but it's a tale of the garbage man because i love this story it's a hunting story i don't i'm not sure i think maybe we told it on the podcast a long time ago but uh i don't know if it was a studebaker in the field or what what kind of deal <laughs> what kind of what kind of uh car the, the family was driving that come and help you got out that deer oh the man but, and the woman yeah. but but let's but let's hear that story start to finish because that was publicish land right well that actually was kind of private <laughs> it's on the <laughs> did fence. you have permission it was on yeah, the fence it's... okay all right i was up here with uh but, but but talk to me uh as far like like set it up like what was the situation where you were hunting why were you hunting there and then well equipment we, i went with him up there you know and he had this place where we could stay in quite a bit of property though. and he was always well he used to be an air traffic controller so he was you know real you know kind of earning like you know real so, analytical you know, yeah so and, and he goes. I don't like anal. I like analytical a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so he, had, he had all these spots, you know what I mean? And and I'd never hunted there before, you know. And how old were you? Oh, geez, I don't know. I mean, us working at Springs, you know what I mean, and stuff. It, this was after. This was after uh, 
and I don't even know which president it was when the aircraft controllers went on strike that time and they all got fired. Yeah, Reagan, was, Reagan. Okay, it and was it was in that era. Yeah, because he got fired from his job, and that's why he was working at Springs too. He was kind of you know, him and I worked together, and uh, we ended up going up there, and uh, we met the guy that that actually lived across the road. He was a barber up there. So we shot shit with him and we're going to go out for the evening hunt, you know, and it was like right across the road from his house. We, we parked in his yard. We walk across this field, you know, and, and get to this spot. And there's a tall tree right there on the corner. And he goes, there it is right there. That's where you got to hunt. And we're, yeah, okay. I've, I've never hunted fields before, you know what I mean? There you have this tree right here. And he goes, Right here, you know, there's been buck coming out of here. Like, okay. So I get up the tree. I'm thinking I'm screwed. You know? And what did you get up the tree with? What were you hunting with? Baker. Yeah. No safety, you know, good equipment. Oh, heck no. no. Got up there. And uh, the whole time, you know, he goes, this is for first guy shoots a buck, you know, the other guy's got to buy him steak dinner, you know. All right. And I was shooting bare Alaskan, no sights, you know, 2117s with feathers, you know, with a, with a thunderhead, I think, or, you know, a head similar to that. Finger dabs? Uh, yeah, just finger dabs. And I'm sitting up there thinking, God damn, he boned me, you know. I'm boned out here. Because he went back and didn't shit, you know. <laughs> he's you know? Get, he's he getting a steak he's dinner. He's done this before, you know, and I'm thinking, Hey, he pulled your you know, so <laughs> I'm sitting up there, you know, and yeah, what the hell, you know, I'll enjoy it, you know, sitting there, it was a nice night, you know, nice evening, all of a sudden I look down here, you know, and these deer are coming out, you know, by these, like, by these sumac trees, you know, and they're coming out in the field, and I'm going a little bit too close, you know, I'm going to go, come out there, you know, and I'm watching them, you know, and all of a sudden I look back, and the one sumac tree's going, <laughs> like this, you know, and I'm going, Holy shit, it's a buck, you know. <laughs> so I, I get my bow, you know. No range finders back there, and I didn't have sight, you know. I'm shooting instinctive, you know. And I get ready, you know, and he walks right out and stops, you know. Boy, I pull her back. <laughs> Let her go <laughs> right underneath. The arrow goes, and it was kind of stony at the end of the field. Click, 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 click. And the arrow went through there, you know, like that. <laughs> They all run out in the middle of the field, you know. They run out toward the road, right the way we came from, you know. And I'm like, God damn it, you know. So I, I get another arrow on, you know, and I'm like, well, I blew that one, you know. So I'm watching them, you know, and then those started coming back, and he just stood out there, you know, and then those were coming back, coming back. Then they got, there was a point that came out over to the to the east, and they started working towards it. And I thought, well, that's as close as they're going to get, you know, right there. And he just started following them, you know. And he got to that one spot, man, and I'm going, that's the closest point right there. So I drew her back, kind of give her the old Kentucky vintage, you know. I said, yeah, I think that ought to do it. <laughs> Let that thing go, man, and that arrow hit him in the side, boom, down he went. He just thought, flop, you know. And here's the arrow sticking up out of the grass, you know, <laughs> waving at me like, you know, and I'm going, holy shit, you know. And, and I got him, you know. So then... I thought, well, he's going to get up. i got to watch him, you know. Well, he ain't getting up, right? So I'm going, all right, I got to climb down. So I climb down, get my, you know, shit, get my bow. Go out there. Well, he's still alive. I spined him. So I've got to dispatch the, the deer, you know. Well, every time I, I go to shoot him in the ribs, I draw back, you know, and the son of a bitch turned and faced me, you know, <laughs> because he could get up, you know, on his front legs. And he, he like kind of come at me a little bit, you know, and I let down and get around the side of him again, you know, and I was pretty excited, you know. I drew the bow, I don't know how many times, you know, half a dozen times, man, every time. Finally, man, the last time I drew it, he turned around and faced me. I said, this is it. Fun, man. I shot him right underneath the neck, right in the chest, right there. <laughs> Brrr, he goes over that, right? So then I pull the arrows out of him and stuff, you know, and and. I, I'm in the grass, and the grass is pretty tall, you know, and I start gutting them, and all of a sudden I hear this. 
Oh shit, man, there's a car, right? They drove off the road. I'm probably, I don't know, 150 yards out in the field. And there's this old Oldsmobile man right there, you know, I'm sitting there looking <laughs> Guy, an old guy and a lady in there, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm screwed, man. I'm on their property or something, you know. Shouldn't be here. They just killed a deer, you know, and all this stuff. And, and they get out, you know, and I'm going, hi. You know, and, and they go, man, that was the neatest thing I've ever seen. He goes, what? He goes, oh, yeah, we were watching that buck from over there, and all of a sudden, he just flopped. He goes, he said, we didn't know what happened to him, he says, you know. And then we seen you go out there. Draw on your bowl. Can we, can we watch you got him? I said, Sure, you know, <laughs> so I'm, I got the deer and everything, and they leave. It gets dark, and I left my stand at the base of the tree, you know, and O'Shank comes back out, you know, and he's giving me the spotlight, there, the flashlight deal, and finally, I, I give him the flashlight, you know, and I'm sitting on the deer, and he walks out there, I goes, he goes, you son of a bitch, he says, you got one, didn't you? I go, yep. He goes, well, how far did he run? I said, he didn't. He goes, what? I said, no. I said, he didn't run. I said, this is where I killed him, right here. He's, he, he goes back and he paces it off. It was 52 yards. <laughs> 52 yards to the tree. He, I don't believe it. He goes, I just don't believe it, you know? And I said, you owe me a steak, dude. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I told him the whole story. But anyways, it, we, we had, he had some guys coming up and we were we were from old Indiana it was, and we were pushing, we were trying to push some deer for him down this little swamp area and stuff, you know? Well, he, I come in from one side, he come in from the other. We get together down there where it opened up, you know, and then the guys are gonna be up their way. So, you know, we were just walking together and it was kind of open maple swamp. And there was a big log laying there and all of a sudden this big fox girl runs and jumps up on the log. You know? he's, he's sitting there, you know, and he stands up. And he's looking right at us. I said, stop. I got an arrow already, you know. And he goes, what are you doing? I go, Pow! and I shoot. And the squirrel disappears, you know. And I go, I got him. And he goes, no, you didn't. He's behind the log, you know. And I goes, no, I, I just killed him. And no, man. So we start walking up there. The closer we get to the log, the squirrel don't run, right? You know, on the other side, and there he is laying there dead, you know. And I shot him right in the throat, you know. <laughs> and Doug goes, ah, I don't believe it, he says, you know. And I goes, what do you mean? I can't believe you hit that squirrel right in the throat. I said, that's a shit shot. He goes, what do you mean it's a shit shot? I said, I was shooting at his head. <laughs> 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 but that was, that was a good time. And, and that's. Uh, the original slock master but <laughs> I, just, I just always remember that because i mean if you hunt with frank long enough like you're going to hear then all of a sudden i was like that ought to do it <laughs> <laughs> oh and i used to shoot a stinker man it's like no holes bar <laughs> but but yeah i think you know for all the guys that were trying to go out on public land or trying to work through it i think you know the, the the countless hours that john and i spent you know where we should have been learning driving two tracks and looking for tracks and then you know when you see multiple multiple deer tracks and usually and this is what i've found from frank is you know it doesn't take very long to walk in there and find that one hot oak tree or that one you know, and, and, and I think, you know, for, for not having any bit of knowledge in an area, like that's what you got to do. And that, you know, kind of did that this weekend with Chris, as we were walking down the two tracks and there's deer walking down the two tracks, but as soon as they veered off, like, all right, we got to follow this and see, you know, what's going on. And when you're just hunting deer, it isn't necessarily your, the buck sign, you know, you can follow all those tracks all the way, you know, and you, eventually you'll find some buck sign, but you know, they don't make sign everywhere that they walk. So, right. you know, you, you set up on a well-traveled area, the odds that one of those many deer is going to be a buck, at least at some point during the year, um, you know, it's going to happen. I've, I've killed just countless deer, you know, 
by just walking in the woods, finding that spot that looked good to me, you know, and knowing, you know what I mean, done it enough times to say, oh, this is the spot right here. And boom, killed him, right? I mean, right then. But, but you're speaking to guys that haven't done it enough I, times. I know, I know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, it's like, it's like the, old, the more you, the more you do this, you know what I mean? Of course, you, you knowledge, of course, but you'll understand what I'm talking about is you, you, you'll just, just say, well, that's really good, you know, and then you should hunt it. Don't, don't go any farther. Do it. If the wind's right, go ahead and hunt it. And some of these pieces too, these, these bigger public ones and stuff, you know, that quite a few guys hunt. Don't be afraid to kind of just like the parking lot places and stuff like that. Just start circling those ones, you know, getting bigger circles. You'll, you might find something interesting, you know, not too far away. Right. The cars are parked. Yeah. So like I say, for, for guys just starting out, I think, you know, I hope, I hope that you found this helpful. And uh, if not, you got uh, at least a little bit of entertainment. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you also, you just don't be afraid to fail as far as like you're not going to kill a deer every time you walk in the woods you know if you if you work hard and get a couple opportunities then you're doing something right you know and the biggest thing is they'll locate that locate that you know if you're just looking for a deer fresh side fresh side and the yeah. tracks you know you can see where they browse sometimes you know if it's in a, in a not in a agricultural area or whatever. and how many times walking in and doing that and that first night the first sit is when you see the freaking deer. Oh, yeah. yep you know yeah. and it's like holy and then you go back and then it's like well, You've been in there see right and that's the thing it's you, like you, it's your first opportunity is usually the best right I yeah found too, you know i mean you can go back there again but I'm, what i'm saying is just like you said john you know i mean that's you walk in there that deer doesn't know you you've been in there you know, right. so you, you know, the deer in here, you can tell. So then hunt it, you know, because if, you know, maybe, maybe if you hunt it a couple of times and all of a sudden you go, wow, geez, I've seen deer the first night. I didn't, you know, now I ain't seeing shit. You right. Know? Well, cause you stunk it up. Buggered, you yeah. know what I mean? But you knew there was deer in there. So where did they go? Like where, if you were a deer, well, where would you, but that's what I'm just saying to like guys that, that have that sort of situation, those, those deer, didn't go 12 counties over no they're just going around no, what those deer do too also and there's another thing that we've found over the years they'll take the path of least resistance a lot of times In, until they until run into something they don't like yeah. Yeah. right so yeah especially early, I early too. season oh, yeah. Yeah. early season you'll be you'll catch them out in spots that you yeah. wouldn't normally but the sign will be there well, like and then old, as it pressure builds then old you're... logging roads or two tracks they'll, they'll they'll take that stuff you know oh, yeah. to a certain extent and then all of a sudden then it's like well you know had enough of this yeah all right we'll close it out on this around the room start with john favorite day of the year to hunt if you can only hunt one. Oh shit november 7th it's a good day so I shot that big one. It's, if it wasn't that one, it'd be no October first, opening day. <laughs> Ernie, October twenty eighth. Okay, Frank. I didn't. I didn't hear about Halloween. Yeah, I'd say you know. I thought you were going to do your birthday. One. Day. I was. I've, I've, I've killed them. I've been with you on those. Time. Yeah. You know, but I, I I like that that last week October. You know, any time. I think it's because we get so rut orientated now, you know. We call it, oh, we're gonna kill the big ones, you know. We want to, we want to be there. It wasn't a rut. Well, you know what? I we think want to be there before that. Happens. Sometimes, but I think that you know, I get real excited when I know they're gonna start getting on their feet early enough to see them. I think. I think, I think in October, you know, if you take the, the last two weeks of October, any time in there can be when they when they're gonna start moving. So for me, I, and it doesn't have any, it, be, because we're so rut oriented and we always take our rutcation and we take, you know, first week of November, you know, the, that year time frame, John, that we're around that seventh, eighth. Um, I don't hunt as much, but my trail cameras have told me 
that unequivocally I need to be in the woods October 25th. Like that's the day. Um, and so, you know, to that point, like take that information that you see from your trail cameras from, you know, when you see those spots, even if you're scouting right now and you say, this looks like there's a lot of deer, or this is really thick, or this is where there's going to be deer. or This looks like where deer are bedding. You know, if you're going to hedge your bets, like when those deer are going to be on their feet and where the deer, where the bucks, where everything's going to be happening, like you can save up those brownie points, those, you know, those hunts, those honeydew lists, you know, type, type things and say, all right, this is when I want to be in the woods. Um, and I think, you know, I've had the most success the first week of November but that's when we hunted that's when i've hunted the most all the time right and so if i were to yeah because that's so like i would always take well my birthday is november 1st so i'd always take that week like that's my birthday week and And you see bucks but you also see bucks that are just chasing exactly and then you're you're limited to that they're not you know they're not in the pattern they're not patterning they're not hitting scrapes they're not you know, callable They're you know, there's a lot of different things where they're not out there searching. They're already found what they're looking for and they're chasing. I so think that what you just said, the search is, is the vulnerable time, you know, because you're in a spot, you know, where he's looking, he could come from anywhere and go anywhere, you know, but he's not chasing. And we've all seen it where he's just out getting inventory. Right. Yeah. But we've all seen it where, the deer shouldn't come from that way. The wind was terrible and he don't care. No. He's, he's, he's right. still right there. And it's what it, bucks I saw last year come right from, from behind me. The wind was blowing to him. And then they, I thought, well, I thought he winded me. Well, no, that deer didn't win me. I mean, it just spooked. He, he just ran over the ridge. He was looking, you know what I mean? He was going, going somewhere, you know, and I went, well, crap, you know what I mean? But it was like, if that deer would have went to me i'd never seen him right that 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 caliber of deer you know yeah so so but you know thank again it's great to have everybody back and maybe maybe john's life's on a little bit more of a even keel so we'll get we'll get some more of john lately but um you know so for the time being and you know thanks for tuning in thanks for listening